Riverside, and K293CF Moreno Valley. Welcome to Building Solid Foundations. I'm your host, Steve Matley. We are on KCAA Radio, 1050 AM, 102.3 FM, 106.5 FM. You can catch us twice per week on Thursdays and on Sundays. You can also catch us on Roku, Amazon Fire, and the Android app. Look for the Building Solid Foundations channel, and we are there along with a lot of other really great shows. Or we are also on 15 different podcast platforms. We're probably on your favorite platform as well. Today, I've got a guest, Martha Razzo. Martha is a mathematician a, and a palate expert. That seems like a strange thing, isn't it? To be a salesperson, a philanthropist, an entrepreneur, a writer, an actress, and a, she is co-CEO and co-founder of Solix Services, which is in the palate business. She, uh, Martha experiences the power of data in her own work at Guerrero's Palettes in Chicago, where she oversees daily operations as their CEO. She has a Mass bachelor's and a master's degree from Illinois Institute of Technology in Applied Mathematics and is currently pursuing her PhD in Industrial Engineering at the University of Illinois at Chicago with a focus on data and process mining. Needless to say, Martha is much smarter than I am, as we can tell by this bio. Martha, it's great to have you on here. It's always good to see you. Thank you so much, Steve, for having me. You did the best bio that anyone could have done of me. So I'm going to steal yours and just basically tell them, you, Steve. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Martha and I, uh, we, well, let's see, we're in, we're in the Fire Up Connect group together, and I met you at an event here in San Diego, personally. I talked to you, I think, by phone and some meetings and stuff before that. Uh, but I met you um at an event and we got to tootle around San Diego for about a day or so, um, which is a nice place to tootle around. I got to know her a little bit. Uh, Martha, for most people, if you have this stereotype that you're a typical mathematician, um, quantitative analysis, brainiac type person is boring. And no, Martha's not that. She's quite outgoing, very friendly, and anything but a boring person, very, very pleasant. So I'm always happy to talk with her. Um, Martha, you are obviously um, not just good at or an expert at, but you appear to me be absolutely in love with math and numbers. Is that accurate? Yes, Dave, I love the numbers. Um, for me, it's like video games. You see how people are addicted in this, that's their hobby, video games. Sports is, it's, is the hobby to somebody. Fishing is hobby to somebody. For me, it's looking at data, looking at numbers and figuring out patterns, uh, making algorithms to solve problems. I enjoy it a lot. And so, so you were that annoying kid in class that always had your homework done early and, and asked for extra credit work, and right? Teacher, you forgot to collect our homework today, that kind of person? Yeah, I wasn't liked a lot. Okay. I was that kind of kid where I would get a 95, and I'm like, why don't I have 100? I was upset. And they, Perfectionist. And the teacher, yeah, teachers would be like, why? You have an A. You have the highest score that anyone could have gotten, at least in this assignment. I wasn't happy. So I was always trying to know why I wasn't getting the perfect score. So you're competing with yourself. Uh, you know your potential, right? You knowing that you could do better. Yeah, I'm not really, com I never competed against anyone. And I know because I was part of the um, IB program. It's a it's a national program all over the US, uh, not even all over the world. So this is a curriculum that everyone had in high school. So everyone, I mean, Africa, US, Germany, you were basically uh, use the same standards to grade these students from essays to tests. So it was very challenging. And a lot of the group of those students, IB students, were very competitive. They were always asking me, so Martha, how are you doing on this test? Um, can you, how are you doing in this? I didn't care. I don't, I, my intention wasn't really to compete against anyone. My intention was, okay, how can I do better every day? And I think I've carried that throughout my whole life and my whole career. How can I be the better version of myself than I am today the next day? And I think with mathematicians, I think, I think that's a, a somewhat more common trait among mathematical minds. And the reason is with math, there is a right answer. It either is or it isn't. And so I think the mathematician's mind is, I either did this correctly or I did not do this correctly, not I did this 95% correct. And where, where most of the rest of the world were going, hey, you know, 80% is pretty good. I feel good about myself. Uh, the mathematician says, obviously, something was, was not all the way correct, and math always has to be all the way correct. Well, 
if a professor in mathematics was listening to you, they will say, no, it's wrong. You know why? Because in math, it depends. If you get into higher level of math, like uh, real analysis, you learn that there is not one answer. So it depends. Like when you talk about infinity, zero to one, and all those infinite numbers, the answer would depend when you're looking at these proofs. So that, that's beyond the level of math I got to in my, my education, yes. So I, ha I have an MBA, so we actually had to do math. Obviously, half the program is quantitative, and you're doing quantitative analysis and queuing theory and you know multivariate regression analysis, all these kind of things. And I was doing it back before you could push the button and the computer would do it all for you. We were actually doing longhand versions of that. That's how old I am. But um, even with that, um, um, I, I, I struggled with math coming through school when I was growing up. I was very good at the, at the language arts, but the math I struggled with. Unfortunately, my dad was a mathematics professor at a college, and he, he thought that anybody that couldn't do math simply, obviously, there must be something wrong with you. you know, I, I, sometimes he'd look at me like, you are so not my child, I can tell, because you can't do this simple math. And I was like, I don't get it. And every math teacher I ever had would have this, they'd go through the steps really fast. Okay, we do this, then we do this, and as everybody know, blah, 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 and then this, this, this. And they'd, they'd make these assumptions, and I'd get lost by about step three. And, and all I could write down in my notes was, okay, step three was a miracle occurred, and then we got to step four somehow. And it never made sense. But I ended up... Um, I have students sometimes, so I do teach at a college, and I have students that will tell me, you know, you don't understand what it's like when you can't do math because, you know, obviously you've made it well in the construction development industry. You must know math. It must be easy for you. And I'll say, no, no. It's a learned skill. And so I'm the one person you can't give that line to because I struggled and I managed to get through very difficult mathematical classes. So, so you can't tell me that. I, I did learn that even if you're good at something or not good at something, you can still do it. You just have to work harder than other people. So, um, but I always was um, a combination of um, envious and irritated with people that just math came to them so easily because I struggled with it so much. But it's, it's very important. I do find it uh, fascinating and yet um, I find it confusing at the same time. And I do, but I, as I say that, um, I use math a lot every day. Obviously, I'm doing uh, speculative development deals. I have to understand basic finance and those things. So in your, in your company, um, how do you apply the knowledge you have in your company? I know that you took an existing company and built it up uh, exponentially using your analytical skills. Can you talk us through how that works? You know, you mentioned something very interesting. You said you took multiple linear regression. So when you are taking that class, a lot of times you feel like, oh my God, what am I going to use this for? And that is the problem. That a lot of the tools that you actually learn in school, what is missing is the creativity of how can you in integrate this into business. And I feel like Professors, if they decide, mathematician professors or even engineering professors, if they choose to do a business, they will be very successful. And let me tell you why they will be very successful. They know problem solving. There, there is no way you're not going to have a solution. Problems either have one solution or multiple solutions. Um, there is no way there is no solution. So you learn how to have this mental mind of being able to adapt and change, but also be solution oriented. Because I know you said like, oh, there's one no solution, but there is something common about engineers and mathematicians is that they're problem solving and solution oriented. So what did I use when I was talking about multiple linear regression? That is one of the things I use. Only that, that, that is one of the simple elements that I use. I use many other algorithms and things that we learn in math, but multiple linear regression, for example, allowed me to look at all the variables and see how they affect my sales. So if I took a linear, uh, multiple linear regression, for example, I took all the variables and then I narrowed it down to what are the variables that affect most my sales. So then, of course, as a human being, I can manage because I'm, I'm talking about 30 or 40 variables. I can only look at three at a time, at least myself. So every month I targeted three variables. So, for example, one of them was my trucking expenses. I know that trucking was very, it was affecting my profits. It was affecting my sales because I wasn't generating enough profits because I was spending too much. So what I decided is, okay, what are the alternatives? What other solutions to trucking? So I looked into leasing trucks. That alone, changing that from owning my own fleet of trucks 
to leasing trucks with um with a fleet company that saved me in total about eighty thousand dollars in one year but that's just one example of how i used a little bit of my mathematics into that i mean another big one that i highly recommend i constantly keep hammering people on inventory i know it's so boring but you have to understand what you own and what you have in order to make decisions yeah, so uh, logistics and inventory are obviously the, the, the basis of most businesses. It's getting materials in, getting materials out, um, and it's understanding what you have. And, and you can't figure out, you cost a good sold, you can't calculate if you haven't done figured out your inventory. You have to know what you have, uh, what you've brought in, and what you've sold. Um, and you're right, a lot of businesses don't really understand how much value is in their inventory. It's just stuff. It, it, a lot of times, even I worked with a lot of contracting companies and their inventory was a lot of times parts and pieces in the shop. And they looked at it as, okay, so it's just parts and pieces, saves us a trip to Home Depot to buy more stuff. But it's, all of it has dollar value. And, and sometimes they, were, they had no idea how much value was sitting in that on those shelves. All those pieces. We're going to have to take a break. When we come back, um, we're going to jump into, uh, there's a, a couple other aspect to you I want to get into that's completely different than math. And we're going to jump into that when we come back. Uh, I'm Steve Matley. This is Building Salta Foundations. And we are talking to Martha Razo, who is a uh, quantitative analysis and uh, number crunching type person and also a very, very nice person to talk to if you ever get up Chicago Way. And she knows everything about pallets. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs> Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. Fire Up Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including, inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development, social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. Estate. Men of Real Estate Radio Show here on KCAA. Oats mortgages can be purchased. All of us want to live in thriving communities. Basically, go to the radio station KCAARadio.com. You can find us on your dial at 102.3 FM, 1050 AM, as well as 106.5 FM. This is Steve Matley. Join me every Thursday at 3 p.m. right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio Talk Show. I spent decades as a professional construction manager, business owner, real estate developer, and a college educator, and I enjoy learning new things from other people. We talk a lot about real estate, business, and finance, but we cover a diverse range of other topics as well. Some of the topics we've discussed in the past few months include real estate investing, leadership, higher education, ADUs, Marketing using technology, multifamily rental property, business strategy, entrepreneurship. You never know who may show up or what they may talk about. So join us right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio. Hi, this is Steve Matley. As a construction professional, I know the importance of selecting the right contractor for the job. Power Solar employs only professional installers. Power Solar will provide a knowledgeable consultant to help analyze your current electric bill, identify site placement, and correct solar technology for your home. Contact kcaaproducer at gmail.com for a free financial savings proposal with no obligation or call 951-551-1350 and ask for Kim. Again, that's kcaaproducer at gmail.com or 951-551-1350. 1350 and ask for Kim. Welcome back to Building Solid Foundations. This is your host, Steve Matley. Today I'm talking to Martha Razo. Um, 
the first segment we were talking about Martha's background as a mathematician and a data uh, analyst. Um, and there's a, another side to Martha that's really weird, and you may have caught it in the uh, intro. It seems to be a non sequitur with the rest of her very mathematical and linear background. In 2019, she co, uh, let's see, uh, it was the, um, she did a one person play. Is that right? You did uh, co authored My Dream Fund, a one woman show about her story, about your story, and how you overcame barriers and immigrant to become a successful entrepreneur and educated, uh, powerful woman you are today. So, this is a one woman show that you co authored. And did you perform this show as well or just write it? I did. I actually got paid for it. <laughs> okay. I performed at Loyola University to their immigration uh, organization. It was a lot of people there. And it was the story of me being an immigrant and also how I went through many barriers to become the professional that I am today. Very empowering story. And just to give you a, a little sneak peek, I am publishing this play and I'm okay. hoping to tour it. I'm going to tour it to different high schools in the Chicago area. And let's see where it takes me there. I'm very excited. Okay. So you're going to go from uh, pilots to playwright. That sounds, that's an interesting transition. And I'm not just doing that. I'm doing it all. Okay, great, great. And, and so uh, how long, is this like a full on like hour, two hour play or is this a skit or what is it? It's a one woman show. It's just me talking about my story. It has music, it has dancing, it has slides in the back. It has a historical story behind it and it interwines with my story. So there's a whole timeline. I mean, if you even want to learn just history of like what it means to be an immigrant and the history of immigrants, it's there. If you want to learn about struggles of immigrants, it's there. If you want to learn about success and motivation, empowerment, it's there as well. So it has a lot of elements. Now, is this, is this show, was it um, ever recorded? Is there some, a place we could go find this? It's not recorded, but I do have, I have a recording of it that I have not even touched. Oh, so really? Okay. I could make it a reality. Okay. Okay. Uh, sounds fascinating. And, and so you actually sing and dance and act and do everything in this play. Yes. I, it's funny because I'm a mathematician. My personality should be very serious, but no, I'm very charismatic, outgoing. If you want me to play somebody silly, I'll play somebody silly. But that does not take away from the seriousness of me in business. When you see me in business, I, I, I don't know how, but I'm very intimidating. And you wouldn't even think about it looking at me from here on this radio. But I am very intimidated because I work in a pallet industry, and that's male-dominated. But men in the pallet industry really respect me because not only do I know my industry, I'm leading in my industry in not only the Chicago area, in the whole U.S. So... Well, good for you. And, and, and for those of you uh, that are listening on the radio or if you're watching this on the streaming and you can only see uh, Martha from the shoulders up, uh, when you say she's intimidating, understand uh, you're all of what, five foot nothing? Oh, you're, you're fairly short, petite lady, right? So, uh, so it's, it's, the, uh, it's the feistiness that makes you intimidating. It's the, uh, the perseverance and the uh, don't take no for an answer uh, attitude. So, and, and again, I, I know you and I can, I can, I know that about you, that uh, when you set your mind to something, you're, you're pretty much set on it and it's going to happen and people better get out of your way or help. So. Well said, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. And, and so, and um, again, you're, you're work in Chicago, but you also have a, um, you have a radio show here in California, even though you're in Chicago, but it is nationally streamed. And so um, Martha hosts, um, one of the four monthly installments of Fabulous Lifestyle. She is the finance host for Fabulous Lifestyle Radio, which is right here on KCAA, actually, on Sundays at 3 p.m. If you catch Fabulous Lifestyle, on the third Sunday of the month is where they talk about the finance. And, and the reason finance ties into that is Fabulous Lifestyle talks about what it takes to live a great lifestyle, food and fashion and fun and friends and those type of things. And, and finance is a piece of that. Because if you don't have money, you don't have any resources with which to have a great lifestyle. And Martha talks to, about how people can um, better manage their finances in order to have the resources in order to enjoy that fabulous lifestyle. So 3 p.m. on Sundays right here on KCAA. 
And uh, those shows are also up on our uh, Roku and the Fire TV and the Amazon, uh, the Amazon Fire and the Android app on the Building Solid Foundations channel, just like this show is. So you can check that out. So Martha is also one of our fellow uh, radio hosts. And as you can tell by her personality, her show is fun. She goes through at a pretty quick pace and has a lot of great information. All right, so Martha, I, I just thought I wanted to bring up that play because it's so so different from what people would think of a mathematician. People think mathematicians are introverted, they sit in a cubicle, they work with a calculator and a slide rule, and they don't really talk to anybody and, and don't have a social life. And that is the absolute opposite of what your personality is. Now, you also are the founder of the 2% Fund. And that's a nonprofit with a mission to increase undocumented students enrolled in higher education through financing and mentorship. So talk us through what that is. Um, so what we do actually this year right now, we just send our letters to the four students we awarded $1,000 scholarships to. We also partner with another, we got a grant where we partnered with WISE. Um, it's Family Bridges. It's a non for profit where we're able to work with eight girls. I mean, anywhere. It doesn't have to be just in the in, in Chicago. And we award each girl $1,000 in the course of two years. So not only are we helping our four students, we're helping eight women who are undocumented. So I'm excited. And the idea about it is because, I, as I said, I'm an immigrant. I came here as undocumented. Fortunately, very, I'm very fortunate and lucky that I got my residency and I'm good to go, but it's not the case for many. And I know the struggle. I understand it and being very successful entrepreneur, I cannot just stay there and, and make money and, and, and not know that this is happening. So I decided to fund a 2% fund with two other colleagues and we're more than happy. This is our second year. This will be the ninth scholarship we award. And we are not only, a, affording how giving them funding we're also mentoring them because every student goes through three to four workshops where they learn about finance they learn about navigating the education system as an immigrant and they learn about confidence building because there's a stigma with one being undocumented and we try to rebuild their confidence so i'm excited that's actually one of my most favorite projects even though it's the one that makes me zero dollars <laughs> but but that's okay you know having having a cause that's a lot of uh, the purpose for why we do what we do to make money is so that we have the resources to do the things that we want to do to help other people. Um, and uh, the, the previous show, uh, if you tuned in last week, we had uh, Brian George talking about as he did financial planning. He was talking to people about how to how to set money aside for charity, how to be able to work into their budget, the way to support their causes, and and so that is a lot of the reason. A valid reason for why we want to work and make more than just sustenance is so we have enough to help other people. Uh, and then if we do that right, then we've helped them so that they can eventually do well enough to make an abundance and help other people. And it keeps passing down. That's, that's the idea is to help other people. Each one go reach down and grab someone and bring them up behind them. So uh, glad you're doing that. Now, you mentioned they do workshops. How, how old are these girls? Are these high school? Hi, uh, no, they're actually, they are high schoolers, they're seniors all the way to college, and they can also be graduate students in the university. So they can okay. be in college, the undergrad okay. or grad students, but they have to be in college or going to be going to college. Okay, okay. So these, these are young adults. They're not, they're not school kids or young adults. Okay. Yeah. And um, the workshops, what kind of um, training and education do you provide? So Currently, I think three weeks ago, we did a resume writing. So okay. it seems very intuitive, but believe it or not, like business owners don't realize that they need a profit and loss. Similarly, students do not realize how important your resume should be because the way they teach you is not the way it should be. I mean, if you think about a resume, there's so many in the pack of whoever is trying to And different, different industries and professions have different standards for what they expect in those resumes as well. It's not the one size fits all. So you buy the book on how to write a resume. That's, that's a great starting point. But, and it also changes. I remember when I was years ago, 
uh, you always have to have a um, objective or purpose statement at the top of your resume. And now a lot of employers, they don't want to see that. that. A summary is fine, but they're not interested in that. They want to get to the meat of what's in there. And, and it changes over time as to what's, what's desired, what's expected, especially now where it's not always humans doing the first review of your resume. A lot of times it's some kind of a computer doing the first review looking for keywords. So resumes are good, uh, and th so if you're teaching them resumes, cover letters, uh, and, and I assume interviewing skills, those type of things, um, that that's that's a lot of good basic information that people overlook. You can get a uh, degree, a certificate, a license in something, but if you don't know how to present that in writing and uh, verbal communication to highlight why you are different or what you bring to the table, then all the knowledge in the world isn't going to help you if you can't share that you can't express that it's, it's so competitive out there i mean even if you have a master's a bachelor's degree that does not necessarily mean you're going to get the job there is a line of people waiting to get that job how do you make sure you you stand out and it's so funny but a lot of the things we learn in college it translate into business but it's like it's not so obvious you need to think outside the box and be like oh these are the dots Right. So we're going to have to take another break. Uh, we'll be, when we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with Martha Razzo. She is a data analyst, a mathematician, and a playwright and actress as well, and a, a philanthropist running her own charity. Uh, this is Steve Matley on Building Solid Foundations. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this short break. Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. FireUp Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development, social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. Estate. Men of Real Estate Radio Show here on KCAA. Oats mortgages can be purchased. All of us want to live in thriving communities. Basically, go to the radio station KCAARadio.com. You can find us on your dial at 102.3 FM, 1050 AM, as well as 106.5 FM. This is Steve Matley. Join me every Thursday at 3 p.m. right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio Talk Show. I spent decades as a professional construction manager, business owner, real estate developer, and a college educator, and I enjoy learning new things from other people. We talk a lot about real estate, business, and finance, but we cover a diverse range of other topics as well. Some of the topics we've discussed in the past few months include real estate investing, leadership, higher education, ADUs, Marketing using technology, multifamily rental property, business strategy, entrepreneurship. You never know who may show up or what they may talk about. So join us right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio. Hi, this is Steve Matley. As a construction professional, I know the importance of selecting the right contractor for the job. Power Solar employs only professional installers. Power Solar will provide a knowledgeable consultant to help analyze your current electric bill, identify site placement, and correct solar technology for your home. Contact KCAA producer at gmail.com for a free financial savings proposal with no obligation or call 951-551-1350 and ask for Ken. Again, that's KCAA producer at gmail.com or 951-551-1350. 1350 and ask for Kim.
Welcome back to Building Solid Foundations. I'm your host, Steve Matley. We are talking to Martha Razzo today. She is a data analyst. She is a mathematician. She is a actress and a playwright. She is a philanthropist running a charity. Now she's doing all kinds of great things, and she's a fellow radio host right here on KCAA. She does the finance segment for Fabulous Lifestyle Radio Sundays at 3 p.m. So, um, Martha, one thing we mentioned at the at the top of this uh this particular show was that you are the CEO and co-founder of Solix Services. Uh, so talk about what Solix is, what kind of services it provides, and what your role there. So in one sentence is I multiply businesses. And in the very good description is imagine me, and I, I thought about this very deeply because People don't understand what I do. Think of me and my team as the engineers and the mathematicians behind the screens building the rockets. I am and my team the ones that make sure that your rocket launches up to its destination and then lands back. And that is very difficult if you understand about launching rockets and going up to galaxy it takes a lot of brain power behind the scenes that no one is seeing but that is basically the brains that's moving moving and and have making the rocket go to where it has to which is very difficult so i do what's called the very difficult and dirty work for businesses the strategizing the looking at the numbers the analyzing the data from finances to marketing to production I am the person that goes in there, looks at it, and, and basically transforms your whole business if it's necessary to multiply your business. That's sales, that is profits, whatever that is to you. Because for every business owner, multiplication means different. It's different. Okay, so if you have a business and it's struggling a little bit and they need your help, a lot of times those businesses are struggling because they're not tracking those numbers. So how do you come into business? It's one thing to look at the numbers that exist and analyze them, but but how do you handle businesses that are in trouble and a lot of it because they're not even tracking? How do we how do you get them set up so they can start tracking numbers so you have something to work with? So I'm I'm an expert when it comes to bookkeeping. So that's the very fundamental, the finances. So if they need my help, it's the simplest the, I mean I call it the basics of bookkeeping, then I help them do that. I either integrate them to a software that does it automatically or they want the hardcore, which I wholly not suggest is to do like Excel sheets and spreadsheets. That's old school. But if they want to do that and that's what they're used to, then go ahead and we'll do that. But I would. Show them how to create profit and loss balance sheets because that is very important that's not only important for financing and getting loans it's important for building a strategy so i i start from the bottom if i have to okay and um the businesses you're going into um do they even understand that they need someone like you to help them no one really knows that they need someone like me and that's my frustration in my industry um, I was talking to a client just a few days ago, and she told me that she has not looked at her books. She has someone doing her books, her uh, QuickBooks. She uses QuickBooks. Someone has been. been doing it for a year, and I'm like, can I get the login? She doesn't have the login to her books. She needs to get it from that person. That is dangerous, guys. If Very this dangerous. is you, if this is you. Make sure you know your login and you know how to look at this. You don't have to be an expert at the QuickBooks, at the software where it's Oracle, whether you're, it's Excel sheet, but know how to look at it and monitor it, like at your bank statements. You don't have to understand the whole bank portal, but you have to understand what you're looking at and, and track your numbers. Because if you have someone doing your books and you're giving them full trust and you're not looking at it, they can be stealing from you. And I feel like a lot of people have that innocence. I Unfortunately, that a lot of business owners don't realize that it's dangerous out there. Actually, one of my biggest jobs in my pilot company is fraud detection. Fraud detection. It, it, it's bad. Yeah, and, and 
the idea of having uh, bookkeepers is to have another party tracking things. To and a part of it is you have multiple people that are looking things to keep everybody honest and also catch mistakes. So sometimes it's not just maliciousness, although it can be. Sometimes it's just a matter of errors, and if nobody's looking, that error gets missed because only one person's looking at it. Now, a lot of business owners, uh, you know, I did a lot of business consulting, and my experience with the uh, smaller businesses is these are people that tend to be very good at their trade, and so they decided to go do it for themselves instead of doing it for someone else. But what they're not good at is being a good business person. They're good at uh, baking cupcakes, hanging drywall, doing laundry, whatever they do for a living, cleaning houses, whatever it is. They're good at that. They're not good at accounting and finance and marketing and payroll and IT and all the other stuff you got to do for a business. And and so when they bring a bookkeeper in, which is usually the first thing they want to they want to pawn off to someone else is the accounting and finance. I don't want to mess with that. And so they'll they'll p- pass that over to a bookkeeper, but They don't even want to look at it, and they don't understand. As the business owner, every month at a minimum, every month you need to go through and have that bookkeeper share with you, this is where we stand. This was your where we started the month. This is where we ended the month. This is what happened in between. This is what we owned when we started. This is what we owned now. This is what we owed when we started. This is what we owe now. Um, and, And so you're right. The business owner cannot be blissfully ignorant just because they don't like the accounting and finance. They just need to spend probably not more than an hour each month looking over the reports and the summaries that the bookkeeper has provided. Yeah, you're so right. It doesn't even take an hour. It basically can take up to 15 minutes because I do it every month. I I do the hardcore work too, but I also glimpse over it i and what i do with my clients and and this is what i do because i treat a business owner like i would treat myself and this is your business um i'm here doing your books but this is your baby so you should also make sure that you i have one-on-one meetings every month with them it's just 30 minutes and we go over the numbers and if anything is out of the park I want them to know and I want them to understand their numbers. And and that's unfortunately with bookkeepers because they only look at at the end of the year when they file the taxes. And when you file the taxes, it's so late. It's too late to uh, reduce on expenses. It's so late to increase your sales because months have passed by, opportunities have passed by. And that is where the strategy is missing because you waited to the end of the year. So I will always say, look at it monthly. Look at these monthly. Right. And even monthly, you're, you're um, still re- being reactive because if you're looking at something uh, monthly, that means you're looking at it a week after the month ended because it had to get compiled and summarized and put in a report form, whatever. And, See, and- I want to mention this, but this is how dangerous it is to not even look at your books on a monthly basis. Um, reconciling is another component. I'm not going to go into details with it, but sometimes people look at it, but don't reconcile at the end of the month. What has happened, and I'm not kidding you, I've had clients pay me up to $35,000 more. They paid me twice because there is not that third or second checkpoint. So if there's not a second or third checkpoint, There is mistakes, and it's because we're humans. It does not matter if you have the bookkeeping system. If you're not reconciling and have a three-point check system, you can be making checks to the same person for the same invoices again and again if there's not that someone verifying. It's very scary. I actually looked at a statistics. In average, U.S. small businesses are losing over $46,000 for mismanagement and cash flow and not looking at their books. It's scary. It's a real thing. And I don't know how to hammer this into people to hire someone. They don't have to hire me, but make sure that they hire someone, but also know how to look at their numbers. They don't have to do all the analytics, but know how to look at the key numbers. And I actually teach that. 
I, I will talk in my next segment. On the next segment, I'll talk about my six-week course where I teach business owners what are key numbers you need to know, no matter if you give this test to someone else. Yeah, and, and the opposite problem also happens. Sometimes it's not double paying, it's we miss paying something. And then all of a sudden, uh, maybe some kind of subscription application that you need for timesheets or something like that all of a sudden gets turned off because somebody didn't pay it, but it just got missed. And, and then you've got to go back and you lose data and all kinds of other problems. So, so whether it's missing things, uh, not paying them or paying twice or three times or something, all of that cost money, all of it's inefficient, um, just not tracking things, bouncing checks because of uh, errors, those kind of things are very, very expensive. And, and it harms your reputation and your customer service. So it's staying on top of things. And I'm a big fan of for a business owner to not do everything themselves because you can't. You can't do 16 full-time jobs and be the CEO, the CFO, the marketing person, the IT person, the payroll clerk, the receptionist. The, the oh, You can't do all that stuff, um, which a lot of people try to do. But when you have other people come in to pick up those tasks, you do need to check on them. You need to oversee it, do, do the quick checks. And as you said, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe an hour once a month. And, and again, when, even when you're looking at monthly reports, remember that's now 30 days old information already. So you're already being a little reactive at your decisions. But if you make that 12 months old information, it's too late to do anything to change trends. The idea is you're trying to identify patterns and trends and you want to encourage and duplicate the positive ones and stop the negative ones, arrest them before they get too bad because a, a negative trend becomes a cancer in your business and if you don't catch it, it'll, it'll eat you alive uh, and you'll, you'll be past the point of no return before you know it and businesses get themselves in trouble that way. So. Yeah, I, I second that, that as business owners, you don't do everything because if you try to do everything, you're gonna go crazy and you're not really gonna be good at the, anything but you should know how to at least supervise everything so you make sure that your business is on track and, and and it's interesting because a lot of people don't think that business is just a trade like you were saying people just either they know roofing they know how to do the smoothies in the restaurant or they know how to do haircuts or they just know how to look at data like if i was just hired as an analyst no, you need to at least understand that there is marketing, there is operations, there is finance behind it. And these are all components that are important that one doesn't have to know everything, but has to be able to supervise them and have tracking systems for all of them. Right. So we're going to take another short break. When we come back, we're going to we're going to talk about exactly that. We're going to talk through what you cover in your six week course. Uh, we're talking to Martha Razzo. She is a data analyst, a mathematician, and she is a business multiplier. So we'll be right back on KCAA. This is Building Solid Foundations with Steve Matley. Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections, hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community-driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. FireUp Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development, social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing, and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. Real Men of Real Estate. Men of Real Estate radio show here on KCAA. Oats mortgages can be purchased. All of us want to live in thriving communities. Basically, go to the radio station, KCAARadio.com. You can find us on your dial at 102.3 FM, 1050 AM, as well as 106.5 FM. This is Steve Matley. Join me every Thursday at 3 p.m. right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio Talk Show. I spent decades as a professional construction manager, business owner, real estate developer, and a college educator, and I enjoy learning new things from other people. We talk a lot about real estate, business, and finance, but we cover a diverse range of other topics as well. 
Some of the topics we've discussed in the past few months include real estate investing, leadership, higher education, ADUs, marketing using technology, multifamily rental property, business strategy, entrepreneurship. You never know who may show up or what they may talk about. So join us right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio. Hi, this is Steve Matley. As a construction professional, I know the importance of selecting the right contractor for the job. Power Solar employs only professional installers. Power Solar will provide a knowledgeable consultant to help analyze your current electric bill, identify site placement, and correct solar technology for your home. Contact KCAA producer at gmail.com for a free financial savings proposal with no obligation or call 951 551 1350 and ask for Kim. Again, that's KCAA producer at gmail.com or 951 551 1350 and ask for Kim. Welcome back to Building Solid Foundations. I'm your host, Steve Matley. We're talking to Martha Razzo. She is a data analyst. She is a business multiplier. We've been talking about how she can analyze your numbers and help a business. And we've been talking about the importance of a business owner understanding what needs to be uh, done by other people in your business, people that you know, like, and trust, but also your responsibility and the necessity of checking on that and overseeing it. Um, I've often used, because I, I come out of a project management world, and I often use the analogy of the orchestra leader. And the orchestra leader is like a business owner. They don't necessarily have to do not just all of it. They don't have to do any of the specific stuff. They have to make sure everything else works, though. And so the orchestra leader comes in, and they don't write the music, and they don't create the instruments, and they don't play the instruments, and they don't even know how to operate the instruments. They don't need to. What they need to understand is how to read the music which is your plan, and how to get all the different specialists, your contractors, consultants, suppliers, vendors, everybody that's, that's involved, employees, and get all of them to play together correctly. And if they do it correctly, it's beautiful. And if they don't do it, it's horrible. And, and that's, that's the way it works. So, uh, Martha, with that, you, you run a six-week course. And in the six-week course, you go through these basics. So talk uh, to us about what you cover in that and how you help the business owners. All right, this is very exciting. I I did it because I see that a lot of business owners need a lot of support. And we go, I actually, I'm very excited about this and very proud because this, I, I know that business owners are not gonna do the algorithms and the mathematics behind calculations. So I develop calculators for this program. So for example, the very first element is we talk about budgets very simple then we go into profit and loss and i show them how to do it the hard way of taking your bank statement and writing it in a spreadsheet and i'm going to have them feel frustrated so they never do it like that and then i show them how to do different systems i mean from quickbooks to oracle they get to choose whatever they want because at the end of the day as a business owner you choose whatever software you want to use but i just want to show them how wonderful it is to use the software because in a button in a click of a button you get all the reports you get a profit and loss you get a balance sheet you get accounts receivable accounts payable report you get all these wonderful things that you need to make business decisions like this because in business everything goes so fast i mean we're living we're living in the u.s the u.s everything is super fast so your decision making has to be quick uh so i show them that but then that's just at the surface of business and and data you need to know your break-even price you need to know how to forecast. So my calculators, I will show them how to use them. They just, it's just a simple calculator where you put an input and it gives you an output. So you put your input and this is your, um, pre uh, this is your predicted sales, your predicted profit. Uh, for your break-even price, this is your break-even price if you want to make 10%. If you want to make 20% profit margins, this is the number if you put whatever inputs you put. So it's very exciting. It's gonna be an empowering class where these business owners are gonna know their numbers. And what is the point of it is because you have to know these numbers. No matter if you give the tax to someone else, you have to know them. You need to know your profit margins. You need to know your revenue. You need to know your break-even price. You need to know how to forecast 
or understand where your business is going. Because if your business is going down or going up, you need to do different strategies. You need to market differently. You need to run operation differently. You need to manage your cash flow differently depending on what direction you're going. So that is fundamental. So I'm very excited about this course. And I have a team of finance advisors who will be there. And it's like the shark show. You see how the shark, you present your pitch. Everyone gets stuck when it comes to numbers. <laughs> when they ask them about their finance, so what is the cost for this? And what is your profit? Everyone is like done. And of course, the sharks are very smart business people. I mean, that's why they're sitting where they're at. They're like, this is BS. I know you're very passionate, but you don't know what you're talking about. You don't understand business. Knowing business means you know the numbers. That's simple. That's it. So I'm going to teach them how to know their numbers and pitch to these finance advisors with the goal that these business advisors would lend them money to even multiply their, their business even more. Because if you want to keep growing, you actually need to use other resources other than your own resources. Right. Okay, so it sounds exciting. A lot of information to cover. Now, um, if people want to get a hold of you, get more information, Martha, what kind of, if, where, do, where do they get hold of you? What website, email, what do you got? Um, they can look at my website. I have two websites. The first one is www.martha, M-A-R-T-H-A, Razo, R-A-Z-O, uh, .com. So, M so www.martharazzo.com martharazzo.com and if they want to call me or they can send me a text too i'm so easy to get a hold of um it's 312-523-5561 once again that's 312-523-5561 in case you're driving i'll say one more time 312-523-5561 if you need any business help, want to transform your business, multiply your business, and make sure that it's recession proof and multiply it, give me a call. Fantastic. And uh, for the listeners out there, I always make sure that our, our guests provide some type of contact information because there's people out there that say, you know what, I like that. I'd like to be able to find more information. How do we get hold of this person? And and then, you know, you want to call the station, but they don't know where I got the guest from. So that's why I always make sure our guests always provide contact information so you can follow up. Because I listen to shows all the time. I'm like, man, I wish I knew how to get hold of that person. You know, you're Googling things, trying to find things. So Martha Razzo, and she is a just an absolute wealth of knowledge when it comes to helping people figure out their businesses, where they stand, how to analyze it, and how to make a plan moving forward to multiply it and make it not just what you'd hope to be, but probably much more than that. Um, I, I cannot stress enough that if you're a business owner and you don't know your numbers and you don't know your profitability, you don't know your assets and your liabilities, um, you're, you're setting yourself up for a real failure and a lot of wasted money and mistakes and frustration. So uh, you need to get on top of that. So uh, Martha is a good place to start. You may have someone locally, you know, that can provide these services, but I would recommend, you know, start with that six week course, get, get your basic foundation under you, get the basic knowledge. Um, most small business owners did not go to business school. They, they learned a trade, they did something and then went into business for themselves. Uh, Martha, I want to thank you for having you, for being my guest on, um, building solid foundations today. Uh, if you're out there, don't forget to tune in third Sunday of the month, fabulous lifestyle. You can hear more from Martha. Uh, this is building solid foundations on KCAA. Don't forget to catch us on streaming on Roku, Amazon fire, or on the Android app building solid foundations channel, or on your favorite podcast platform. We'll see you next week. And until then go do something different this week. The legacy. Southern California's KCAA, the number one talk radio station.